Hi and welcome to All Things Marvelous, I'm John Paul and today we're going to be making a remake of the Rings of Power title sequence from the Prime Video TV show that was out a couple of years ago. This involves a great free plugin called Molecular and it gives Blender's particle simulation the ability to interact with one another. I did do a time lapse of this when I started the channel, but to be honest, I was being lazy and I thought it'd be good enough for people to follow along with. But I think I've learned my lesson and that's why I thought I'd make this tutorial for you now. It's a great feature and not really used that much, so I thought I'd show you how to get it up and running and hopefully you can make some of your own interesting simulations. Now the intro is done, let's get into the video. So to begin with, we need to download Molecular. There's a load of different versions for whatever Blender version you're using. As you can see, it goes all the way back from 3.1 to the older versions. There's also a version for Blender 4.0. I'm using 4.2 and it works just fine with that. I'll put the links in the description below. The other thing you'll need is a logo or some sort of outline where you want the particles to snake around. I just took this Tolkien logo in an SVG format. The first thing we're going to do is take the default cube and change the dimensions to 6.1 meters on the X and Y and then 0.5 meters on the depth, on the Z value. Head over to edit mode and delete the top face. This will give us a nice container. Rename this container in the file window. Next up, make sure you have molecular installed as an add-on. Head over to the add-ons and use the install button to find the zip package that you downloaded, whether that's molecular or molecular plus. You also need to add extra objects and the rock generator. You just need to turn these on as they come standard with Blender 4.0. Next, I'm going to import some rocks and the Tolkien logo that I downloaded previously. I'm going to move the rocks over to one side out of the way of the simulation. To make rocks with the rock generator, you simply go to mesh and go to add rock using the rock generator selection. In the modifier section, I also brought these down in the levels viewport to one so that they have the least amount of geometry as possible. As you can see, each rock I'm using is about 100 to 200 triangles. Then select convert to mesh. This is how I created all of the rocks that you can see here. The way that you get detail is through the texture. I also made some glass ones to make it look like gems. Okay, now onto the logo. If you import an SVG, it will automatically come in as a Bezier curve. I'm just gonna position this so you can see what's going on. Make sure if you change the size of it that you always press Ctrl A to apply the scale. In the Bezier curve options, you'll need to change it to 3D. Then head over to edit mode. While you're in edit mode, you need to turn on show normals. You should see something like this, which looks quite messy. That's because you need to change the mean radius down to one and the mean weight to one as well. You should get something that looks like this. Now in the active spline settings, you can hit the cyclical button and turn it off. This will make it so it's not a joint Bezier curve. And in segments, I chose to change the direction of the arrows. This will be the direction of the flow of particles. Depending on the logo that you use, it might be okay to use straight from the SVG. Unfortunately, with this logo, as you can see, there seems to be lots of problems with the corners and the way that the flow of the normals are. This is really hard to fix if you're going to try and do it manually. So I found the best thing to do is just start from scratch with another Bezier curve using the outline of the logo to redo the curve. Just before I do this, I add a mesh circle and press F to fill it. Then scale it down and position it at the start of the curve where you want the particles to appear. Now I add a new Bezier curve, straightened it out and positioned it at the top of the logo so I can start to construct my own new Bezier curve from this. I go around the whole logo using grab, rotate and extrude to create a new Bezier curve using the outline of the logo as a framework. You can select either side of the handles to rotate to get the shape that you need. And as you can see, I now have a much cleaner Bezier curve with all the normals not bunched up or tilted in any way. 
With the curve selected, you need to add a force called a curve guide force. This will produce two circles, one with a dotted line and one with a straight line. The straight line is where it starts and the dotted line is where it ends. And in minimum distance, I scaled this down so it's roughly the same size as the circle where the particles will be generated from. Also, make sure this is in the same collection as the circle and container. With the circle selected, I head over to Molecular Plus and click Emitter. This will give us a particle simulation, and I use the following settings to set the snake particles. I use 20,000 as the number to generate, the frame start is 1, and the frame end is 700. Make sure the animation has 700 frames as well. The lifetime is how quickly the snake particles will move around the curve. I set mine to 650, which means they should get to the end with about 50 frames to spare. I reduce the velocity to 1 millisecond on the normal, turn on rotation, turn the phase up to full, and the random to about halfway. The best way to make sure the simulation works and doesn't freak out is to use Halo and make sure that the scale is the same size as the viewport display size. Here, I'm going to use 0.025 and 0.025 in the view display. If you hit play, you should see the snake appear from the circle and follow the path of the curve as shown in the video. Head over to the physics section and turn on self-collision, but leave collide with other objects. Change the friction to 0.4 and the dampening to 0.4 also. Then click Calculate Particles Weight by Density and change to Sand. Next, click on the container and make sure in the physics section it has collision enabled. Turn the dampening to about 0.9 and the friction to about 0.4. Okay, now select the container again and duplicate this. Reduce the size a little so it's a little bit smaller than the container itself. Then head over to edit mode and select the top edges and press F to fill. This should give us a box that we can create particles inside of. From here, I'm just sizing it up so it's just within the container box. Make sure you turn off collision on this new object and rename it particles. Next, head over to the molecular plus again and hit emitter. For these settings, set the number to 1000 frame start to 1 and end 1 with a lifetime of 700. Source emit from the volume and distribution grid. Resolution I set to 50 and randomized it by about half, 0.3 or 0.4. Make sure the velocity of the normal is 0 as well as 0 for all of the other bits of velocity. Again, using Halo with a scale of 0.025 and a viewport display of 0.025. I actually changed the resolution to about 80, so it filled the cube. Next, in the physics section of the molecular add-on, make sure self-collisions are turned on and collide with others are turned on as well. Again, friction set to 0.4 and dampening set to 0.4. Then, calculate particles by weight and select sand again. You also need to go back to the circle of the particles, which is where the snake is, and change this so that the frame starts on 50. This will give the particles time to settle before the snake starts to appear. Make sure the sub-steps on the molecular add-on on both the circle and the particles are set to 6. You might see something like this, where the entire tray of particles moves all at once. This is because all of the physics is in the same collection and the Bezier curve force is being used on the particles. The way to make this stop happening is to go to the force of the field weights and make sure that rocks 2 or something similar that doesn't have a force within it is set as the effector collection. This way, they'll have their own physics without being affected by the Bezier curve force. When you click simulate, you should see all the particles settle in the bottom of the tray. As you can see, I realized that there isn't enough particles to make the simulation work properly. So I stop the simulation and do two things. I turn the resolution up to 120, go to edit mode, and then select the top face of the particles cube and make it fill all the way to the top. 
This way, when I click simulate and they settle, there is enough particles within the box so it just fills over the top of the logo. As you can see, the sub steps makes the animation jump to 4,900 steps instead of the 700 of the animation frames. But this will change once the simulation is ended and you should begin to see the snake appear and interact with the particles in the box. Once you've baked the simulation, all you need to do now is replace the halo render with the collections of the rocks and roughly size them to the size of the halos. I do this with both the particles in the box and the particles of the snake, and that's pretty much the simulation done. Next, I add a HDRI and set up some cameras to film the snake as it goes round. Because there are slight gaps in between the particles, the best way to make this look good is with good lighting and some interesting camera moves. I used a gobo of a plant and a couple of spotlights to add some mood lighting and did some camera panning with the snake as it passes through the box. It is possible to run the simulation using the actual rocks themselves, but this takes way more time to set up and it's very difficult to make sure that the simulation doesn't go crazy. Using the halos as a guide and then replacing them afterwards, the bake is much safer and produces a much stable effect. I'll include the rock samples and textures along with my own blend file in the description, so you can try it out for yourself. Once you have Molecular installed, all you need to do is hit simulate and it should create the simulation for you. Thanks for sticking around to the end, I hope you liked the video and have learned something new. Let me know if you have any troubles in the comments and I'll try and help if I can, and I'll catch you on the next video. Thank you.